I'm Jay from Ecotech, and this is... Josh from Worldwide Corals. And uh, Josh is a true master of coral keeping and coral care. So in this video series, we're going to ask him 10 questions per episode about his experience reef keeping. Some of those questions are from me, and some of those questions are from you guys. So welcome, Josh. Thanks, man. We really appreciate having me. Pleasure's all ours. <laughs> uh, for anyone who doesn't know you, what do you do and how did you get into this position? Well, what do I do? Um, sometimes I feel like nothing. Um, anything livestock related usually goes through either Vic or myself. Um, but in, in the large scheme of things, everything livestock falls on my shoulders one way or another. Yeah, and to put that in perspective, if you're not familiar with Worldwide Corals, check it out online. Uh, what they have there is absolutely impressive, particularly in the quantity of tanks, the quantity of coral, the display setups, and everything else. So Josh is being really modest in that capacity. But one of the other interesting things was how you actually got into this, because this was actually kind of your dream, right? Yeah, I mean, I always really liked the ocean. I just liked fish. And it's funny that, you know, now everything is coral, 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 but, you know, it just happened. Um, when I was in New York, I had a, a handful of really unsuccessful tanks, I think since 2005. And I never really made anything of it, but I still enjoyed it. You know, there wasn't a lot of resource, everything was online, and I wasn't much of an online person. When I moved down here in 2000, I'm sorry, when I moved to Orlando <laughs> in 2008. You're back out close to New York right now. But. Yep. Uh, I moved in, in into Orlando in 2008 and you know I was in restaurant management and it just really was it was a lot of grind didn't care for it and I always kind of wanted to do something with fish so worldwide corals at the time had a sign on the door and I applied and I wasn't crazy excited about their offer but I said you know what I really want to do it and I mean that's kind of all is to it and now you potentially are one of the biggest hobbyists in the world by water volume it's just fun man it really is very cool all right so for our first series of questions okay. and hopefully we can run through these pretty quick it is about your favorite topic and favorite place certainly one of mine worldwide corals so I'm gonna go ahead and start right there so first how many tanks do you have and how much water volume? In our last facility, I could tell you how many tanks we had. Now, I really don't know. Um, if you don't count any of our mixing vats or anything like that, we're in excess of 40,000 gallons of water. That's a lot of water. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of salt to mix. And I think you were telling me earlier, in terms of Ecotech equipment, I think Radions and Vortex combine number around 300 to 400, somewhere in that range. Well, we have over 250 Radions um, and well over 300 Vortex products, whether it be an MP10 or MP60 or an MP40. Absolutely incredible. That also makes you probably one of the most experienced Ecotech users <laughs> on the planet as well. <laughs> So Anika asks, how many team members does Worldwide Corals have We're now? Just shy of 60. That's wow. including everybody from finance to livestock to service and maintenance. And if you ever stop by the store, you'll see them hard at work as well. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Very, uh, everything from, from quarantining to unpacking to packing to managing the WYSIWYG uh, to managing the, the store, running the store. And actually there was a, uh, I'm gonna skip a quick question here, but Christian asks, how is the lagoon tank coming and why does everyone who works at your store or the shows seem so nice? Well, first of all, Christian, I'm not sure you know everybody there. <laughs> um, no, we enjoy what we do for sure. Uh, that's probably why it comes off that way. Every single person that I work with directly is happy to be doing what they do. So I can't imagine that doesn't have a large role in what, what comes off of them, you know? Well, when we were downstairs unpacking Carl, I had a big smile on my face. So I think you know, even if you've been in the industry quite a while, like just working with, you know, if that's something that you, you take pleasure in, just working with marine life every day is just a really cool experience. Yep. Uh, Libby and Nick both had questions 
what do you do or what's your plan in event of a power outage? So currently we have um, smaller generators that run different parts of our facility. The, the big goal is to have everything on one backup power, which is really close to conception, but I think everything with COVID slowed down the county and the permitting part of it, it's, it's been an absolute Kind nightmare. of a sore, sore subject, right? Yeah, it's a really sore <laughs> subject. I, Everything because is on. It's something that, as as having all those systems, I mean, obviously, as a home tank, you know, you can have a battery backup, you can have a generator, but as a facility with that much water that you need to maintain, well, I mean, that's a that's a real concern. Not only you need is to it have redundancy and then redundancy on redundancy, right? Yeah, not only is it you know the the livelihood of all the corals and the livestock, but also the families that our business provides for. You know, if we were to yeah. lose, it's. It's a lot. It's a lot so of inventory. Automatic yeah. transfer switch. It's going to yeah. be our best friend. Plus, I mean, Norlando is not exactly in Hurricane Alley, but it does every once in a while get a little bit of a taste, right? Really frequently, actually. Really? Okay. Yeah, we're on a really good grid. You know, we're, we're right across the street from SeaWorld, which makes it a priority. So our plaza that we're in is actually a really good spot for that. Wow. Well, that is good. Uh, David asks, what's your biggest success in coral aquaculture and what's the biggest hurdle? I'd actually like to start with the hurdle, probably. Um, that would be keeping as many corals as we bring in alive long term. I mean, it's obviously all of our goals as a hobbyist, but in the aquaculture setting, not everything is 100% sustainable long term. Um, when it comes to being able to yield product. Some of them are slow, some of them are not worthy, um, but finding what it takes to make them right is probably our biggest success. Um, some of the corals are ugly when they come and then they turn phenomenal. That's a huge success. <clears throat> so so it's, it's, it's taking, you know, not obviously the stuff you, you grow in house, which is a large percentage of what you sell, you already have a lot of control over that, but mm -hmm. then there's also stuff coming in, obviously, from the, the places where it's collected overseas, and that's a hurdle, is, is finding uh, out of that what has commercial viability and, and finding homes for all that coral or adjusting it so that it's, it's or, or survivability, right? Like some of the stuff is very finicky and yeah. finding a way to tank harden it. Yeah, tank hardening and making a color that's worthy, you know, because mm. if it doesn't look good, nobody's going to buy it. Mm. Right? Would you want something that's brown or blah green? Not normally. You know? So you, you have to color it up. Mm -hmm. oh, interesting. Uh, do you still feed? This is Jay, not mm -hmm. me. Another Jay. Uh, actually, I know he, I know Jay. He's a customer of your store. Okay. Um, do you still feed the tanks every hour on the hour? We're supposed to. So to answer that question, yes, we're supposed to. You know. Things get in the way, you know. We get we get hung up doing other things, but they, our our tanks do the best when we can feed them the way that we're supposed to. So yes. All right, we're getting near the end of the first round of questions, or this week's questions, I should say. Ben wants to know: Would you open another franchise? Maybe after we perfect what we're doing now. We're doing a good job, but there's always intricacies, you know. It, Running a business isn't exactly the easiest thing. So if we could figure out how to model it 100%, yeah, we would, maybe. So if you don't have a local fish store in your town, reach out to Worldwide. <laughs> they might be interested in setting one up there. All right, when you guys, oh, we like this question. When you guys get a new shipment of wild corals, do you ever find something new and exciting? Oh yeah. I mean, not super frequently anymore because we've seen so many coral, but yeah, I mean, from time to time, a new color variety and even something we've had for three or four months that we thought was something that was old and boring, maybe it grows a little bit different or it yields a different growth structure. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see different stuff from time to time, but not very frequently. The other thing I would say about you and Vic, and, and I'm sure this is true of the other the other top coral guys in the industry as well, but I know you guys are always out there looking around at what other people have. And mm -hmm. I've seen Vic in particular, you know, he'll be like, 
um, that one. It's different to the others. We need to have that, you know, and you'll be like, no, we have that. He'll be like, no, that one's a little different. And, and I'm sure some of the times it's not, but some of the times maybe it is, but we can settle the debate. Yeah. We glue them right next to each other. If they start to kill each <laughs> other, really? then we know they're not the same. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's really cool that you're just always looking for something new and different and that, um, you know, both of you guys particularly, like your eye is that tuned to, to the different different morphs that it's the thrill of the chase i mean it's not easy to find something new and exciting but if you find something that you have that you really like and it's a little bit different mm -hmm. now it's another one mm. yeah good point and sometimes it's completely environmental you know in your tank it may look different from what it looks like in mine and again you put them next to each other and if they turn the same then they were the same color. they were the same yeah, yeah. Uh, okay last question do you have a water cooling system and what would you recommend for people at home to keep their tanks cooler during hot summer days? Since we switched over to pretty much everything efficient, you know, Ecotech products are extremely efficient. We run mostly Vectras, you know, all Radions, all Vortec products. So we kind of eliminate that heat problem. So we don't use any kind of cooling system. Um, well, and the building's air conditioned. Right? Yeah, there, I think we have like 14 or 13 and a half tons or something like that of AC in our, in our building. So it stays temperature controlled really well. For everybody that needs one, maybe consider using more efficient products. And if you just live in a spot that's hot, that doesn't have a lot of air conditioning, I mean, there's really only chillers. I don't know of any other way that works well there's a short-term solution which i saw devin use when his air conditioning failed where he actually put in frozen bags of ice, like frozen ice packs yeah. just to cool the water down and so i get a pinch you know that works um okay well that's awesome that's uh concludes this round of questions so thank you very much josh and we'll be back with more questions they weren't hard bring on the hard ones next time <laughs>